Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, seek His assistance, and ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our own souls and from the evil results of our misdeeds. If Allah guides someone, none can lead that person astray. And if Allah leaves someone to stray, none can guide him. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I further testify that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. People of Iman observe taqwa of Allah as he rightfully deserves and do not die except submitting to Allah in Islam. Mankind observe taqwa of your Lord who created you from a single person and from him created his spouse and then spread from the two of them multitudes of men and women. Observe taqwa of Allah by whom you make requests of one another and do not sever ties of kinship. Indeed, Allah is always watchful over you. People of Iman, observe taqwa of Allah and speak words that are correct. If you do so, Allah will guide you to perform righteous deeds and forgive your sins. When a person obeys Allah and his messenger, he will achieve the greatest success. The best speech is the book of Allah, and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The worst things are those which are innovated and then claimed to be part of Islam. All such innovations are classified as bid'ah, and all bid'ah is misguidance. You must also remain with the jama'ah, because the hand of Allah is over the jama'ah. Allah said, and do not be like those who became divided and differed among themselves after clear proofs had come to them. Those are people who will face terrible torment. My dear audience, any united and refined society you find is one that resulted from the diligence of its members in sincerely seeking to make it that way. Sound conduct is one of the most precious things that can permeate the heart and mind. No matter how much scientific, industrial, or commercial progress any civilization makes, none of that will amount to anything substantial without sound conduct. A society will remain in good standing so long as the innate disposition which Allah created its members with remains intact. That disposition includes noble conduct and virtuous qualities. The society will remain in a good state so long as those aspects do not become contaminated and its overall unity is not undermined. It will also remain in a good state so long as it is not tested with troublemakers whose hearts are dark and tongues are sharp. Their mission is to spread certain words among people and incite problems between them. Servants of Allah, any time that incitement finds its way in, it divides societies, breaks families, and turns friends into enemies. It is that incitement which turns hearts against each other, ignites the flames of mutual disparagement, and feeds hostilities. It is that incitement in which no one involved truly wins or gains anything. It is that incitement which infiltrates homes, relationships, men and women. It is that incitement which causes harm instead of benefit, tears the fabric instead of mending it, and opens a wound instead of healing it. Servants of Allah, incitement in this context essentially refers to instigating disputes and encouraging hostilities by pitting one group of people against another. With this understanding, incitement is a word that does not carry anything besides negative connotations. The texts of Islam, the intellects of people, and the innate disposition within all humans have nothing praiseworthy to say about such incitement. Rather, it is something blameworthy and problematic in its entirety. It brings evil no matter which way you look at it. It starts with troublemaking and ends with boycotting. May Allah grant all of you his protection. Incitement is, in fact, an act inspired by shaitan. When someone gives himself to it, he wreaks 
utter havoc. As a result, it actually causes people to avoid the person who does it. They would not want to walk upon the same path as him or be in any gathering along with him. If they are forced to be in his company, they would be sure to avoid speaking with him. Any intelligent person endeavors to stay away from him. It could never be otherwise when they see the various types of his victims, spouses, friends, neighbors, partners, and colleagues, servants of Allah, a person who incites is a truly despicable individual. The spite he harbors leads him to spoil the wholesome, uproot the stable, and make the straight crooked. He and anyone resembling him are like devious fire starters amidst any collective. Being close to him is a loss, while staying far from him is a triumph. Someone who incites is like a scavenger that feeds off filth and like a hot coal that burns whatever it lands on. When someone spends his time and sells his religion and dignity in order to become a member among the troops of Iblis, you will only find that person to be someone who swears oaths frequently and is a despised liar, a slanderer going about with calumnies. If it is not spite that prompts him, it is hatred. And if not hatred, then loving bad for others and disliking good for them. This type of person cannot find peace throughout his day unless he finds a chance to unleash his malice and his hatred for others attaining anything good. It has been astutely observed that you might see those people to be your associates. However, their headaches are cured by seeing you afflicted. They are a people who, when darkness has fully set in, shoot piercing thorns with the words they transmit to instigate problems between people. Servants of Allah, in order to recognize the danger of inciting people, contemplate the despair of Iblis. Contemplate the despair of Iblis, whom Allah expelled from all mercy and goodness. When Iblis despaired of getting people to worship him instead of Allah, Iblis channeled his efforts to inciting problems between them. The Prophet said, Shaytan indeed despaired of having worshippers in the region known as Jazirat al-Arab devote worship to him. However, he incites problems among them. This was collected by Muslim. Iblis certainly stages his attack along with his troops. He makes promises to people, but his promises are nothing but deception. As a result, his traps ensnare souls that are diseased. Those are souls, both humans and jinns, which have refused to do anything besides drape themselves in repulsive conduct and allow themselves to be conscripted among the troops of Iblis. They make a sworn pledge to him that their mission is inciting problems. The foundation they lay for themselves consists of three things. Ghiba, speaking about someone in his absence by saying something he dislikes. Namima, deliberately carrying statements between people to make problems among them. And Buhtan, lying. They turn friend into foe and can come between spouses and even make them split. These feats are indeed utterly terrible sins and acts of injustice. The teachings of Islam unequivocally counteract incitement. They forbid it, condemn it, and consider it a type of betrayal. Allah said about the wife of the Prophet Nuh as well as the wife of the Prophet Lut, they were the spouses of two of our righteous servants, but they both betrayed their husbands. This was not betrayal that involved immorality. Rather, as explained by Ibn Abbas, Ikrima, Mujahid, and others, it involved the wives divulging things which they knew to the exclusion of others. As for the wife of Nuh, whenever anyone accepted the message of Nuh, she informed the tyrannical prominent figures among the people to whom Nuh was sent. As for the wife of Lut, whenever anyone had been accommodated by Lut as a guest, she would inform the people of the town so they could commit obscene acts with the guests of Lut. Servants of Allah, that constitutes incitement and Allah referred to it as betrayal. In fact, betrayal is a form of nifaq as it relates to one's actions. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned 
that one of the signs of the munafiq is when entrusted, he betrays. Allah Himself told the Prophet about the munafiqun, had they set out with you for battle, they would not increase you in anything except ruin. They would have hastened to spread discord among you, the people of Iman, as some of you would have listened to the lies they spread. In addition, Allah's Messenger said, Iblis sets his throne over water and then sends forth his troops. The ones among them who hold highest status with him are the ones who cause the worst strife. One of them comes and says, I did such and such, but Iblis tells him, you did not accomplish anything. Then another comes and says, I did not leave the person I was assigned to until I managed to separate him from his wife. And Iblis says to him, you have excelled in your task. This was collected by Muslim. Islam's teachings earnestly aim to maintain harmony and they forbid any path that undermines or eliminates it. Thus, they prohibit inciting problems between a man and his wife or an attendant and his family whom he serves. In fact, someone who incites such problems is considered as having opposed the guidance of the Prophet Abu Dawud collected that the Messenger of Allah said, a person is not one of us if he turns a wife against her husband or a slave against his master. There is no one who inflicts worse harm upon his own religion, damage upon his beliefs and actions, and destruction upon his integrity than someone who devotes himself to incitement. How could it be otherwise when such a person essentially uproots his religion by his own choosing? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Should I not inform you about something better than the rank of fasting, prayer, and charity? The companions replied, Of course, please do. He then said, Reconciling between people. Ruining the relationship between people completely uproots and wipes out all goodness. This was collected by Abu Dawud and the Tirmidhi. I thought Ibn Sa'ib mentioned that when he once came to Mecca, a Sha'bi met him and said, Abu Zayd, tell us some of the narrations which you heard. Atta replied, I heard Abdul Rahman ibn Abdullah ibn Sabit say, No one who sheds the blood of people, consumes usury, or carries namima should reside in Mecca. I was surprised that he placed namima on the same level of severity as bloodshed and consuming usury. A Sha'bi then commented, How come you find that surprising? Do bloodshed and other grave sins occur except by way of namima? Thus, we can see how crucial it is to have a clear conscience and a clean heart which does not harbor malice. Rather, when it sees two friends, it is happy to see them together. When it sees two spouses, it prays that Allah grants them His blessings. And it loves for others the good which it loves for itself. Servants of Allah, when something relatively minor is prohibited, that implies that anything worse than it is also prohibited. It was reported that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited inciting problems even between animals. This was collected by Abu Dawood and the Tirmidhi. If that is the case for animals, which do not have intellects as humans do and are not responsible for fulfilling certain duties to Allah, then what must be said in the case of humans who are creatures that Allah honored and favored greatly over many others? Servants of Allah, it is essential that we beware of anyone who divides united groups, breaks homes, splits families, turns friends or partners against each other, and comes between people in positions of responsibility and those under their care. That sort of incitement is a ploy of shaitan which does not spare anyone. It even caused brothers to mistreat their father, throw their own brother down a well, and make their father go blind. The Prophet Yusuf السلام, concisely summed up the cause of that when he said, And my Lord brought all of you here out of the rural area where you were after shaitan had sown enmity between me and my brothers. May Allah bless us all by the Quran and Sunnah and allow us and glean benefit from the ayah admonition and wisdom they contain. I say this much, if what I've said is correct, it is from Allah. If anything is incorrect, it is from myself and shaitan. I implore Allah to forgive me, you, and all Muslim men and women. Thus seek forgiveness from Allah and repent to Him. My Lord is certainly the most forgiving, the bestower of mercy.
All praise and gratitude are due to Allah for His kindness, guidance, and blessings. Servants of Allah, you must continue to observe taqwa of Allah. You must also always bear in mind that a Muslim is to protect himself from falling prey to incitement, being one of its participants or advocates, or merely being pleased with it by way of his feelings or words. Someone pleased with something is just like the one who does it. Any discerning person would avoid ever being involved in incitement just as a healthy person would seek to avoid anyone with a contagious disease. A discerning person would stay far from anything that uproots his religion and tarnishes his, his integrity. Incitement has no right to spread among a people who generally only have dignified words circulate among them. Incitement and dignified words are at complete odds. They cannot coexist in the same setting. Allah said, tell my servants to say what is best. Indeed, shaitan sows enmity between them. There is practically no society that remains unaffected by this ailment. However, there are times when the agents of incitement are more than at others. It must also be borne in mind that incitement is a seed of evil which cannot bear its fruits unless it is put in ground which is fertile and properly suited for it to grow. There is no ground more fertile for the seeds of incitement than ears which accept what they hear without first verifying its accuracy. Not everything a person knows about should be conveyed, and not everything conveyed should be accepted. When words of incitement do not find ears which listen to them, they cannot pit people against each other after they were already united. Allah certainly spoke the truth when He said, they would have hastened to spread discord among you, and some of you would have listened to the lies they spread. Even if nothing else was said about incitement, besides it being mentioned as a quality of people who incurred Allah's wrath, that would be sufficient. Allah said, they like to listen to falsehood and to devour anything forbidden. Thus, when someone hears a statement, he should not hasten to believe it before verifying its accuracy, and he should not form an impression before fully understanding the reality of what is said. There is an adage to the effect that you should not be completely convinced about certain matters based on just the first thing you see because the initial light that appears before dawn is not the light of the actual dawn. No individual or collective can protect itself without closing the doors which are avenues for incitement. They must do so preemptively before it happens as well as to remedy the situation if it actually happens. Our role model in doing so was the Prophet It was reported that he said None of you should convey things to me about others. I would like to come to you without any ill feeling in my heart. This was collected by Ahmed, Abu Dawood, and At-Tirmidhi. If a person conveys to you something unpleasant, he is like someone who wants bad for you. There is an adage to the effect that if people ever put someone known for Namima as a sentry, they would be ruined. A person who conveys bad things to you is like someone who wants bad for you. In addition, a man once came to Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik and said, I have a piece of advice for you. He replied, if it is for us, then let us have it. However, it, if it is for other than us, we do not need it. The man said, a neighbor of mine disobeyed and defected from his contingent. Al-Walid replied, as for you, it appears you are a bad neighbor. If you wish, we will send someone with you to investigate. If you told the truth, we will distance you. And if you lied, we will penalize you. However, if you wish, we will let you be without sending anyone anywhere. The man said, rather, let me be. May Allah grant you his mercy. Incitement is a technique employed by shaitan, and it is something that we must be aware of. May Allah grant all of you his mercy. In conclusion, invoke salah and salam upon the best of all creation, the one who will be granted the haud and intercession on the day of judgment. Allah commanded this, starting with himself, then mentioning his angels, and then addressing you, the people of Iman, where he said, people of Iman invoke salah upon the Prophet and invoke salam upon him as well. O oh Allah, send salah and salam upon your worshiping servant and messenger Muhammad. O oh Allah, be pleased with his four successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of his companions and all who follow their path until the day of reckoning. 
O oh Allah, most merciful, be pleased with us along with them by your pardon, generosity, and kindness. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and the Muslims and weaken shirk and those engaged in it. O oh Allah, grant victory to your religion, your book, the sunnah of your prophet, and your believing, worshiping servants. O oh Allah, relieve the distress and suffering of the Muslims who are afflicted. Settle the debts of those who are in debt and heal our ill and all the ailing Muslims. We ask you this by your mercy. For you are the most merciful. O oh Allah, Lord of all creation, grant us safety and security in our, in our nations. Rectify our authorities and leaders and make them people who are righteous. O oh Allah, ever living, self-sufficient sustainer of all, guide our leader to the words and deeds which you love and are pleased with. O oh Allah, owner of all majesty and kindness, guide his aides and advisors and make them people who are righteous. O oh Allah, guide him and his deputy to all that you love and are pleased with. O oh Allah, grant our souls taqwa and purify them. You are the best who can purify them. O oh Allah, rectify the conditions of our brothers in all places. O oh Allah, assist our brothers who are downtrodden in all places. O oh Allah, grant your assistance to our brothers who defend our borders. O oh Allah, make their hearts steadfast and defend them. Our Lord is perfect in every way. He grants protection to all of his messengers. And all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all creation.